Hmm, what do we have here? For the first time, Ukraine shut down the Russian strategic bomber 222M3. This video was filmed by the local eyewitness. The plane crash landed in Stavropolsky Krai, which is roughly 300 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. And here we have the image of debris. According to the latest information, it was a missile strike. So I wonder what kind of the missile was used in this case. Tupolev was carrying two of the H-22 missiles, which also were shut down by Ukrainian defenders. However, some of the missiles went to hit Ukrainian infrastructure, unfortunately. And exactly after attack, Russia lost the airplane. At first I obtained this information from the ground news platform. Ukraine claims it shut down the Russian strategic bomber. And based on images you saw before, this information is 100% real. For the first time, Russian bomber pilots were punished. And for sure they are now scared performing their missions attacking Ukrainian infrastructure. The story was covered widely in media and depends on your current location and where you receive the news from, you may have different perception of events. That's why the tools like the ground news platform are really important to analyze of what actually happened out there. The ground news source is a superb platform to find what you really need. You may join it by clicking my personal link ground.news Dennis. You may find it in the video description just below. And you may find all of the articles in this place or you may just check the bias distribution. Well, for this one it looks evenly split between left, central and right. Let's check the Ukrainian source at first of what they are saying about the case. We may translate it into English. So here the article is dedicated about the Russian attack that happened during the last night where Russia used also Tupolev 95 together with Tupolev 22M3. Russia mostly targeted the Dnipro city and unfortunately there are some of the casualties reported. So the article is concentrated on the Russian attack. Meanwhile, we may also check the Russian news from Maria Novosti it's government owned. It might help you to analyze the article even before reading it. Well, with low factuality, I wouldn't trust the information published in this media source. But anyway, let's check it out. So this time Russia confirmed that they lost one of the strategic bombers, publishing absolutely nice photo. They also published the video that I showed you before about the airplane just falling down from the skies. RT also reported about the case. They say that three crew members were evacuated by the search team. Some of the Russian sources say like here that they were found and evacuated, but some say that just bodies were found. This military bomber should have at least four of the crew members to operate. Guys, the ground news is the awesome platform. I not only use it for Ukrainian news, but for the news around the world. I use it on a daily basis. It helps me not just with my channel on YouTube, but also to be updated about what is happening around using my laptop or the ground news application on my smartphone. And now, my friends, please check out my personal link ground.news. Dennis, you may find it in the video description just below, or scan the QR code available on the screen, which I actually use. So you may access all the features of this platform using my personal link and by your subscription. My friends, Ground News is not a big corporation or something. They rely on our support. Plus, they also support the job that I do on YouTube, being a long-term sponsor of my channel. So I highly recommend you to support this platform. Ground News, thank you for sponsoring this channel. Let's speak more about the Russian bomber. For sure, Patriot systems weren't used because they have limited range, but Ukraine claimed that it used S-200 air defense systems Soviet-made. Definitely those have the range up to 300 or sometimes up to 500 kilometers. Depends on the size of the target and also modification of missile. Tupolev 22M is a very capable machine. It was designed to carry aviation bombs and cruise missiles, potentially able to destroy the United States air carriers. Well, it is only possible without any sort of the defense of the air carriers, which wouldn't happen in real life. If we check out the history of incidents and accidents, Ukraine already destroyed one of the airplanes of that type. It happened on August 19, 2023, then Tupolev 22M3 was destroyed with the help of the drone strike, but that time the airplane was just on the apron at the parking spot. I guess you might remember those images. But today the airplane for the first time was hit in the skies by the surface-to-air missile. By the way, Ukraine also had those airplanes before, 
but with the help of our partners from the United States, with whom Ukraine signed the agreement, Ukraine just got rid of those perfectly airworthy airplanes, as well as it got rid of its nukes, which I think was a huge mistake to do, judging on the current events. So this is the Ukrainian Tupolev 22, which stayed in Ukraine after the Soviet Union collapse, but, but you see what happened to that perfectly flyable machine. In the other cases, the Russian army just crushed those airplanes on their own, like for example, during this really hard landing. Poor visibility, and here we go, the airplane collapses into two of the parts. The outcome is understandable, total kaput. Or as it happened over here, then the crew decided to reject takeoff, but it was too late. The takeoff runway available was shorter than they thought, so they excluded the runway and the airplane later on collapsed into the bushes. So it's a great day for Ukrainian defenders. But Russia definitely hit a residential civilian building right in the center of the Dnipro city. As I told you before, casualties were reported, so Russia may only respond by hitting civilian infrastructure of Ukraine. That's what they do, that's why they are barbarians and basically spread the terror around themselves. And I'm very happy that Russian pilots got what they deserved, at least some of them. The director of the Ukrainian intelligence, Budanov, said that Ukraine used the same tools to shut down 222 M3 as they used before shutting down A-50 over the Azov Sea. Just to remind you, A-50 is the Russian AVAX airplane. Ukraine was preparing for this operation for the very long time, at least one week our defenders were planning this strike. Also, the great success was to shut down the Russian Ha-22 missiles, which have never been shut down by any sort of the air defense until today, so Ukrainian air defense is little by little improving. Ukraine publishes this video from the control unit of the S-200 system. As you can see, the most part of it is blurred, but anyways, it's claimed to be the exact same unit which targeted the Russian aircraft. Guys are definitely heroes. Speaking about the air defense, Jens Stoltenberg says that the crucial help for Ukrainian defense is on the way. Hopefully, he is right. We have more awesome news for Ukraine, for example, from Chankoy airfield, which was recently attacked by Atakams missiles. We already have proofs that there was Atakams used by Ukraine. I'll show you evidence a little later. So we have some of the spots where Atakams landed. And here, indeed, we have the confirmation that Russia lost one, two, three, four of the S-400 damn expensive air defense systems. Russia, thank you for putting all of those systems very close to each other. So definitely this dramatic loss for Russia was confirmed. So after all, this image was indeed correct. And here we have the parts of the Atakams missile, so at least two of the units were recovered. It is the cluster munition type of the Atakams missile. Sorry about the word mark, but there were some of the kabooms reported in the Bransk Oblast. I can see it over here and also over here. Bransk city is not far away from the Ukrainian border, and Russia has some of the military facilities out there. I wonder what is that? There is the smoke coming from the place. Maybe the Russian oil refinery or power station. For now, it's really hard to say. In the city of the Staria Skull, Belgorod, we also see some sort of the kaboom. It is just happening right now while I'm recording this video. And about the main military bill, the resolution was a great initial. So it will be put it for voting on Saturday. Republicans and Democrats with huge majority supported the bill. So we have pretty much high chances for it to pass through the Congress and later on through Senate. On my Patreon page, I created the post describing the situation with mega proposals or amendments, which are kind of the hilarious. By proposing some nonsense, they want to sabotage the military support for Ukraine. But the good thing that no one would listen to them, well, just for 10 minutes. That's the introduced time limit to listen to the congressman during the discussion of the meeting, but later on, those proposals will be just declined. Also, they try to blackmail other Republicans and impeach Mike Johnson. But it will not work for MAGA already, because according to the law, two days should pass after the introduction of the impeachment voting. But the voting for the Ukrainian bill is tomorrow, so they're already too late with this. So the voting that was done today is just to introduce the bills 
into the Congress tomorrow. The main thing is obviously tomorrow, and the next step is the Senate approval, after that the President of the United States. Oh, Viktor Orban, long time no see. He is shocked about the military support of Ukraine. He said that some of the NATO countries are very close to send their troops to Ukraine. He said that potentially it could bring Europe closer to the big war. He is really scared about it, and he reminds me Elon Musk with this rhetorics. He afraid that Hungary would become the toy in the hands of the superpowers. Until he is in power, Hungary wouldn't take any sort of the side. The Russian so-called Foreign Minister Lavrov gave the interview to the Russian so-called journalist today, and he mentioned some of the very interesting statements speaking on behalf of the Russian FSB clan. According to the Istanbul Agreements, Ukraine was the part of the fifth article of NATO. But without Crimea and Donbass, just to remind you, those agreements were cancelled. Russia should push the line from which Ukraine might attack Russian territory. The Kharkiv city plays a great role over here. So he stated that Russia is very interested in the second largest city of Ukraine, Kharkiv, which is very close to the Russian border, it's the biggest downside of it, so Russia might try to attack it this year or the next one. He also mentioned about four of the Ukrainian regions, which became the territory of the Russian Federation, as he said, well, it is only according to the Russian fiction book Constitution and their imagination. But here we may understand that Russia would continue the war at least until it gets control over those regions. We are speaking about Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Luhansk regions. And here the main one from all of his rhetorics, we are sure that the special military operation in Ukraine should be continued. Again, they are not willing to negotiate. Well, sometimes they call for negotiations, but they also say that Ukraine should give up its territories. Definitely those are not negotiations, but capitulation of Ukraine in this case. Ukraine will never follow that trap. So Lavrov finished his statement that we do not believe Ukraine. Well, we do not believe Russia either. One of the most famous Russian propaganda journalists, Semyon, was found dead somewhere in Ukraine. He was the correspondent for the Russian Izvestia and, yeah, something happened to him, probably got sick. The weather is terrible now. Right, let's go for the Frontlines review. Here we speak about Novomikhailovka village. This video was shown on a deep state military map source that tell about the number of the vehicles that were demolished in the place. Russia has numerous of the attempts taking this town under control. They are already in Novomikhailovka, controlling the part of the small town, but still all of their meat waves, which they constantly send there, are under the Ukrainian attacks. So altogether Russia lost more than 300 of the vehicles just near to a single town, and yet they are unable to occupy it. Yes, yeah, 314 of the vehicles. All of that is actually confirmed with the help of the drone images. You may check it out yourself while I'll post the full video on my Telegram channel. I think it's just the waste of the Russian army. There is no any chance for them to occupy all of the Donetsk Oblast, not even saying about Kherson Oblast and Zaporizhia, with two of the major cities like Zaporizhia and Kherson. Also, they are dreaming about Kharkiv. I think that Russia would waste their entire army in that city. And Russia continued the modernization of their tanks. The Western audience calls it a Blad tank or a Blad mobile. Well, this defense could be working against the drone attacks, but it also cancels some of the tank capabilities. For example, here the turret is basically jammed in a single sector, and here the tank weighs quite a lot. Right, about the latest military map update, we have it in Georgivka. Their enemy advanced just a little, so let's check out the timeline was yesterday and it is today. Not any settlements were captured by occupiers, but this T-type tree line. Yorgivka is located not far away from Marinka. Also enemy advanced on the outskirts of Ocheretina. Let's go to Ocheretina. Here probably they entered, yes, yesterday Ukraine pushed them hard and today they advanced once again. So let's check out the timeline for recent days, so the day before yesterday yesterday and today. They went to the private sector of the village. And again, the location of it is not far away from Avdivka. The deep state says that the fighting continues in Pervomaiska. Let's check out this timeline. So yesterday and 
today. The gray area expansion quite a lot. The location of a settlement is not far away from the Donetsk airport. And actually today's advancement creates the risk for Ukrainian army in this particular sector. The Russian army might advance towards Novelsky, trapping our forces in this place. Let's check out the distance. It's just one and a half kilometers, one mile, a little bit less than that. The good thing that here goes the river, which is the natural obstacle for the Russian army. So I do not expect that they would advance very fast towards Novelsky from the north. Anyways, we'll see how it goes. Those were the only updates for today. The last night Israel attacked the territory of Iran and Iraq. It was quite a limited attack using just few of the tools. No significant devastation was reported. I think Iran will be fine with it. And we'll see how the tensions will count down in a couple of weeks for sure. I do not expect the respond of Iran on respond of Israel on respond of Iran on respond of Israel attacking Damascus as they respond an escalation from Iranian proxies. As you see, everything is kind of difficult in the Middle East. The Russian offense minister Shoigu visited the Russian factory which produces the T-80 tanks, the new modification of those. As you see, some of them go with a grill on the top and extra armor of the turret. Russia is still capable to produce those massively, but I think they should concentrate on producing blood tanks. Guys, even though Russian army is so mighty, it is able to produce lots of the units, but I think after all, it will fail. It will not happen tomorrow, obviously, but this process is imminent for Russia. Why? Well, probably I'll tell you about it in my next video. And now, my friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And you may also check my personal link in the video description just below to have 40% of Vantage Plan subscription for the Ground News platform, the best news resource that I use not just for my job, but to obtain the most fresh information. Guys, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.